That's exactly what we saw happen in this story, debunking our report of last week from Natural News. Now you can see this article here, he's got the video. It looks like the video is embedded, but actually if you click on it, it doesn't do anything. It's just a picture because he doesn't want you to see the video. He wants to tell you what he thinks we're telling you. And what he said is, you can already see the story's not being reported at all accurately by Jones, et cetera. The story has nothing to do with Fukushima and instead is about the effects of global warming on the ocean. Well, that's not true. What we reported was an exact quote from the National Geographic, and it said in March 2012, less than 1% of the seafloor beneath Station M was covered in Dead Sea salps. And it says now by July the 1st, more than 98% of it was covered by the decomposing organisms. The major increase in activity of deep sea life in 2011 and 2012 were not limited to Station M though. Other ocean research stations reported similar data. So what caused this increase in dead sea life covering the floor? And it's not located to just one area. As a matter of fact, that article did try to tie it into global warming, but that was their inference from the data. Our inference from the data is that it makes more sense to tie it to Fukushima. Why? Because global warming isn't happening. And it is certainly not happening in the time frame that we see this dead sea life happening. So we have the data. And we say we have dead sea uh, life on the bottom of the floor. We also have a nuclear accident. So we're making a correlation. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's a direct cause, but it is a sufficient correlation. There is no correlation to global warming. That's not happening. They also criticize us, interestingly enough, by saying that this was only happening in one area. No, the report said that it was other ocean research stations reported similar data. So it's not just localized in one area. If it were localized in one area, why would they think that it was a symptom of global warming? If it was global warming, wouldn't it be in every ocean? So you can see how this information is being distorted and twisted. This was actually a report from the journal, The Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Now, this was also data that was collected by the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute. So the bottom line is, is that we look at this data of the increased dead sea life at the bottom of the ocean, dramatic increase. They say it's due to global warming, although there is no global warming for the last 17 years, although we have a record Arctic ice flow going on now. As a matter of fact, we have global warming scientists who have been trapped at the Arctic for quite some time, and the rescue ships have been trapped trying to get them out of there. So that's not happening. So we don't see a causal relationship there, but the timing is significant. He criticizes us for saying that this, these dead fish came around about a year after Fukushima. But that's exactly what we would expect. You don't die right away from radiation, but uh, sea life as well as animal life dying within a year or two of this exposure is kind of a canary in a coal mine. Looking at this article from the BBC, they ask, why are Japan's Fukushima 50 still remain unknown? And that's a good question. Actually, they're prohibited from talking to the press. They're prohibited from giving their names. The government there as well as the company there doesn't want you to know anything about them. We can see animal life dying, and we know that just like canaries in a coal mine, that's something that we should be concerned about. But we do see things happening with the humans who were exposed. We don't know who these 50 were, but we do know that the Fukushima boss died in July of 2013. The Guardian reported this. Now, they said that he took early retirement from the plant uh, in late 2011 after being diagnosed with esophageal cancer. They said that he was a heavy smoker and he told everybody the company line, the TEPCO company line, that it was from his smoking and had, of course, nothing to do with him being there for very long periods of time, being exposed to very high dosages of radiation, had nothing to do with him dying of cancer two years later. However, there are sailors on the USS Ronald Reagan that are not trying to cover up for the Japanese government, that are not trying to cover up for TEPCO. They are very angry about what happened to them, and they're speaking out. They're not only speaking out, but they're suing. And they have refiled this lawsuit. This came out in the middle of uh, January. In Japan, they were working for four days on the Fukushima relief, and many of them returned to the U.S. with thyroid cancer, leukemia, brain tumors, and many other things. Now, these are 71 sailors. Most of them are in their 20s. We know that the risk to young children is much higher than it is for adults in their 20s. And the risk to exposure varies depending on what your age is, what your sex is, what your genetic background is. But a fetus or a young child is going to be much more susceptible to these radiation levels than the sailors. And yet we see 71 of them saying that they've come down with a wide variety of cancers. So there is something here that the government doesn't want us to talk about. 
we see this flow now of debris, radioactive debris, at approaching the coast of uh, California, if it's not already there from these elevated readings, but we have flippant answers that are given to us by the local authorities, or they hang up when we ask them why they are stockpiling massive doses of radiation treatment. Now, one last word here, if, because all of life is temporary, right? We can always handle this with just duct tape. And of course, that's what they did at Fukushima. Amazingly, we have a report from Kit Daniels now, a Japanese worker who spent six months working on the Fukushima nuclear reactor after the problems said that they were using duct tape to fix radiation leaks. And he also said that they didn't use rebar in the concrete, but just used wire mesh. An amazing story. Now, we're going to be right back after the break, and we're going to talk about some updates to global warming predictions from Al Gore, some of the amazing statements that he made. So stay tuned. My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. We're on the march, the empire's on the run, and the InfoWars Army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution, InfoWarsStore.com.